Today I'm going to share my three tips for successfully shooting with continuous lights in your studio portrait. everybody, Lindsay Adler here. If you asked me five years ago about shooting continuous lights in my portrait and fashion work, I probably would have avoided it. But now there are so many powerful and affordable continuous light sources. They have a range of modifiers and I've started to include them regularly in my work. In fashion, in portraits, in beauty, you name it. Now, not only does continuous light provide you with the benefit of what you see is what you get when it comes to exposure, but as a professional content creator, it is fantastic because I can shoot stills and motion simultaneously without changing the light. In fact, many of my biggest clients from beauty campaigns to TV commercials and billboards, they've requested that I shoot with continuous light because of this versatility. Since so many of us are starting to hear about continuous light, today I wanted to share my tips for successfully adding it to your studio work. When using continuous light, you have to be extra aware of any ambient light in your space. A window, overhead light, bright work light in the corner, a skylight, any of these things can adversely affect your image. So if you shoot strobes, you know that usually they can overpower the ambient light. This is not true with continuous. It can mess up your exposure, your white balance, things like that. So what is the solution? It's simple. It's Eliminate all unwanted ambient light. You have to pay attention. Turn off overhead lights, draw the curtains, just take more control over your space. A bit of window light in the studio might not be horrible, but it's probably not ideal. If you're new to photography and still learning to see light, you wanna take extra time here and make sure, look around your space, eliminate ambient light. When shooting with continuous lights, you'll need to be conscious of your camera settings and how they're going to affect the final image. Now with today's mirrorless cameras, it's wonderful to work with continuous lights because the electronic viewfinders allow you to actually see changes of exposure and white balance in real time. But that's not really where our challenge lies. The truth is that most affordable continuous lights have significantly less output, especially when compared to strobes. So unless you're getting like really high powered HMIs, you have to know that the power output is going to affect your exposure and your camera settings. We're going to discuss output more later on in this video, but let's just cover camera settings for now. We're going to begin with shutter speed. With continuous light, you have to consider camera shake and subject motion. So shutter speed is extremely important. Typically, I try not to go any slower than one two hundredth of a second. It's not a hard and fast rule, but I found most of the time at this shutter speed, I can achieve pretty sharp results, even with just a little subject motion. However, if I'm photographing actual motion movement, I have to bump that up to one five hundredth of a second or faster. If the subject's dancing, twirling, jumping, I try to go much faster to make sure everything's sharp. My recommendation is to shoot it and then check how fast is that motion? Is your shutter speed fast enough? Just like you would do with natural light. Now you may be tempted to say, why not shoot at one two thousandth of a second or even faster to make sure everything is sharp? And hypothetically you can, but remember that most affordable continuous lights don't have a ton of output. So this means you'd probably have to go to a really high ISO. Because continuous light can suffer from camera shake, you have to remember to turn on your image stabilization. Now, depending on the camera that you have, it could be called optical stabilization, vibration reduction. You wanna look this up because the feature may be turned on the lens or the camera or both. Now, if you're used to shooting strobes, you're probably shooting at a lower ISO, but with continuous lights, likely you need to push it higher. The question is, how high are you comfortable going and how much output do you have from your lights? This is something you're going to need to test for yourself. Now, I shoot with the Canon R5, and when I grab my continuous lights, I usually start at ISO 800, and I'm very happy with the results, it's not too noisy, but I do regularly need to go even higher. Aperture works the same, uh, regardless of how you shoot. Wider apertures let in more light, and it's also a narrower depth of field. This doesn't change when you're shooting with continuous lights. And depending on the output of your light source, you may need to shoot at a wider aperture, but remember, how does that affect the depth of field you need to achieve your desired look? Be aware of the color temperature of your light. Is it daylight? Is it tungsten? Is it somewhere in between? I recommend setting a custom Kelvin white balance right in your camera to make sure you match the color of the light. Then also grab a photo of a gray card or color checker to make sure it's more accurate in post-processing. If you have multiple lights, make sure the color temperatures match. Most affordable continuous lights are not as strong as strobes. They do not have as much output. Furthermore, keep in mind there's this weird thing that a 200 watt continuous light is nowhere near as powerful as a 200 watt second strobe. The measurements are not even close to the same and this is so misleading. It's a science thing for how they measure the lights but it's really confusing and I don't want it to lead you to the wrong purchase. So this is where you have to take a moment and reflect upon your needs. How do you shoot? 
So for studio shoots, what are you capturing? How much output do you need? How much depth of field? Is there motion? Generally, more output is better, but stronger lights mean more cost. So what is your budget and what are your requirements? For example, if you focus on headshots, portraits, children, products, you can definitely get away with a lower power light. You probably need to shoot a wider aperture or have a higher ISO or move the light closer to the subject, but lower power will still work. If, however, you shoot groups of people like families, you're definitely going to want to have more output because this is how you achieve sufficient depth of field without having to go to an extremely high ISO. If you like to use big, large, soft modifiers like large umbrellas with diffusion or octaboxes or scrims, these modifiers, they lose a ton of light because they're bounced or diffused, which means you need to bump up an output to achieve the desired camera settings. Now I keep mentioning more or less power, but what does more or less really mean? Let me give you a disclaimer. There are so many variables that come into play based on how you shoot and the tools available. So I'm just making some general suggestions, assuming that you're just getting started in shooting with continuous lights. All right, so for close-up portraits or product work, you can likely get away with about 200 watts, and this is going to be cost savings. I picked up a budget 200 watt second continuous light a while ago for only a couple hundred dollars, and it works completely fine for headshots and close-up beauty work. And it was great because I grabbed it for really cheap and it let me test out continuous light. However, as I started to expand into fashion photography, full length, big modifiers, I realized I needed more output. And I'm in love with the Nanlite Forza 720B because it has so much output and it's bi-color so I can change the color temperature. I'd also look at the Forza FS300 because it's a lot of bang for your buck. A lot of output, a great price, but keep in mind that it has a proprietary mount. So it has specialty modifiers, whereas many of the others are Bowen's mount which gives you more flexibility. Now, one more note about shooting groups. If you are going to shoot groups, you need more output. I definitely aim for 500 watts or more if you can. With less, you're going to find yourself frustrated and always shooting at like 2000 ISO or higher. If you are new to studio lighting or just looking to get into stills in motion simultaneously, then I think that continuous lights may be a great choice for you. The technology behind LED lights has improved by leaps and bounds in the last couple of years, and there's many fabulous options out there. But keep in mind, there is a difference between continuous lights and strobes, and that's what I've shared with these tips today to help you be successful when integrating continuous light into your next studio shoots. So if you'd like to see some of the gear that I talked about or some of the gear that I use most commonly with continuous lights, be sure to check out the links in the description below and visit adorama.com. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.